welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of every recipient of the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and I wanted to thank you all for tuning in, and this month is looking to be one of the most listened to months since starting the show. So I'm pretty happy about that. I want to thank you all for tuning in and making that happen. If you don't mind, please give this podcast a share to a friend, a family member, co-worker, uh, pretty much anyone you know to help keep this podcast growing. That's all I want. I don't want anything else other than this podcast to grow, reach more people, and uh, to keep the names and actions of the Medal of Honor recipients uh, keep them going for as long as possible. That's that's my goal. I just don't want these names and actions to disappear. That's the whole mission statement of this podcast. Today's episode is episode number 221. And if this is your first time hearing this podcast, welcome aboard. Please be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to be sure you get new episodes every time they come out every Wednesday and Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And now, a tale of honor. Eugene was born on the 12th of November, 1930, in Los Angeles, California, where he would grow up and go to school. At the age of 17, he enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps on the 7th of June, 1948, and attended recruit training at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego. He served as a fireman at the Marine Corps Supply Depot in Barstow, California, and when the Korean War began, Eugene was transferred to the 1st Marine Provisional Brigade, and he deployed to Korea as a machine gun ammunition carrier on the 14th of July, 1950. It was his actions almost two months into his deployment that would earn him the Medal of Honor posthumously. The citation reads, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving with Company G, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, 1st Marine Division reinforced in action against enemy aggressor forces at Seoul, Korea on September 26, 1950. While serving as an ammunition carrier of a machine gun squad in Marine Rifle Company, which was temporarily pinned down by hostile fire, Private First Class Obregon observed a fellow Marine fall wounded in the line of fire. Armed only with a pistol, he unhesitatingly dashed from his covered position to the side of the casualty. Firing his pistol with one hand as he ran, he grasped his comrade by the arm with his other hand and, despite the great peril to himself, dragged him to the side of the road. Still under enemy fire, he was bandaging the man's wounds when hostile troops of approximately platoon strength began advancing toward his position. Quickly seizing the wounded Marine's carbine, he placed his own body as a shield in front of him and lay there firing accurately and effectively into the hostile group until he himself was fatally wounded by enemy machine gun fire. By his courageous fighting spirit, fortitude, and loyal devotion to duty, Private First Class Obregon enabled his fellow Marines to rescue the wounded man and aided, essentially, in repelling the attack, thereby sustaining the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. He gallantly gave his life for his country. Eugene died just a few months before his 20th birthday, and his parents received his Medal of Honor from the Secretary of the Navy on the 30th of August, 1951. Eugene Arnold Obregon is buried in the Calvary Cemetery in Los Angeles, California. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor Podcast. Head on over to talesofhonorpodcast.com for more information, other ways to listen and support the podcast, and please be sure to leave a good rating and a nice review. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening. <laughs>